Hi everyone, welcome to Dusty Shelf Collectibles. Well, seems like an eternity ago, but one of the first videos I did on the channel was a review of this, the Nigel Gresley, released in the Hornby 00 range. Um, Diecast metal body, quite an expensive loco, and I ended up with a title on there of something along the lines of Underwhelmed and Overwhelmed on the same loco. And the reason being, when I started opening this and unboxing it, I started to find fault with it. So first of all, there was a plastic tender. I didn't expect that. Secondly, then some blemishes down the side of the tender with the plastic showing. And then finally, the bands that go across the boiler top, uh, not meeting at the top of the boiler. But it was a beautiful runner, really, really powerful loco. And the, the precision mechanism on it was one of the best I've ever seen. So hence, underwhelmed, overwhelmed. Well, I started that video with unboxing from scratch just to talk about Hornby's packaging and um, yeah indeed this arrived this morning so I thought I'd actually do the same thing on this video now it is a reflection of how far Hornby have come with their packaging if I just open this up and show you so I think they use this company GF was it G GFM I think that's the name of it anyway um, that's what the tape says and inside the box we have the Hornby delivery box and I'm just going to take my personal details off of that before I broadcast those to the world right so this is so this is one of Hornby's 10th uh, anniversary great gathering locos um, now I put all six locos on pre-order with Hornby uh, back in January last year in the hope that uh, interest rates and the, the fuel crisis and all the other things would be over and there would be some money floating around but sadly that's not been the case so I had to cancel five of them and choose one of the locos to uh, to review on the channel and only one because they are quite expensive so I went with the Nigel Gresley again and I'm hoping that this is a vast improvement on the previous one on this one um, in that the blemishes won't be on there um, the lining will be perfect now now to be clear with this one it says all over the literature this is coming with a plastic tender and the way Hornby have referred to it is the traditional plastic tender because uh, back in the day Hornby uh, 00 locos did come with a plastic well they, they had a metal body and plastic bits on them um, but uh, yeah this has been made clear this does have a plastic tender so there won't be any moaning about that the only reason I complained on this is because I wasn't aware of it and when I went back through all the advertising and all the literature on it it wasn't mentioned anywhere so that's why I was a little bit upset with that this one on the other hand no, knowing what I'm getting into not a problem so a very expensive loco die cast body again and uh, my expectations are equally as high as they were for this one so let's get this over to the bench and uh, let's have a look inside so we have the 2023 release of the great gathering from hornby um 2013 to 2023 so i think the best place to start is if we go all the way back to 2013 and i bring in the 2013 catalog now if i turn the page over to uh here page 30 you can see here the great gathering we've got the six i'm just gonna move this down so it's in shot we've got the six locos here limited edition these were limited to 500 units and if you bought all six of them you got um, the same number on all of the certificates. So basically, you know, if you were you were lucky enough to be the first to order, you'd have certificate one for each of these locos, and then you could send off for the Great Gathering wall cabinet that you see down here. Now, at the time, I really wanted this set. I was, you know, some one of these collector sets I really wanted to get. But unfortunately, 10 years ago, we were moving house. My daughter had just been born. You know, all kinds of things were going, and uh, I didn't order any of these. I just couldn't at the time. And then we scroll on to 2023, obviously this being the Flying Scotsman Centenary Year catalogue, and I turn over the page, and this is the reason why I put all six of these on pre-order, because it's, I thought this is a wonderful collection, being in the double O, I thought they'd look fantastic, and I'd try and get one of those cabinets if they ever came up for sale. Scroll on a few months, and it was quite clear that, uh, you know, I, no way could I buy all six of these at 300-odd pounds each. Um, so I had to choose one of them, and I chose the Nigel Gresley. Now, I do, as I said in the introduction, I feel very uh, fortunate that I am actually able to get one of them. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it was a big decision on which one I went for. But uh, so having ridden behind Nigel Gresley a, a few times, I did go and uh, go for the Nigel Gresley again. 
Anyway, the six locos that we have here, I'm sure everybody's aware of this, but there's the Mallard, the Dominion of Canada, the Union of South Africa, Bitten, Dwight D. Eisenhower, and Sir Nigel Gresley. Now at the top here, it says, on 3rd of July 2013, at the National Railway Museum, York, the last surviving members of the class of A4s gathered in celebration of Mallards achieving the world speed record for steam, steam locomotives, which occurred on the 7th of July, 1938. Four of the A4s were UK based, while two, Dwight D. Eisenhower and Dominion of Canada, had been shipped from North America and Canada, respectively. I'm adding a few bits in there. And then it goes on to say, in celebration of the Great Gathering, a limited run of just 510 Hornby 00 models, each of the A6 A4s, being produced as seen in the July 2013 livery. So, just a couple of things on that. So, these were released 500 units each. These are being released in 510 units at each which is obviously signifying the 10 years since the first release. And just to repeat, these are in the livery that they were seen at the Great Gathering. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get to the Great Gathering um, in York. I did, however, manage to go to Shildon in February of 2014. This was for the Great Goodbye. And I'm going to put a little bit of footage in here of Sir Nigel Gresley running past. Um, just looks so beautiful in steam and the sound it made. There's something very, very special about these A4s, I'm, I'm sure you'll agree. And now I guess my prediction for 2024. So 2014, there's a catalogue here. Interesting to see, eight pounds for the catalogue. We got a release from Hornby called The Great Goodbye, which again was the six locos, 500 units each, and then you could get the, the glass cabinet again, but this time with The Great Goodbye in there. So uh, my prediction obviously for 2024 is we are gonna see all, all six of these locos back in the catalogue under the guise of The Great Goodbye which is the kind of thing that uh, we've known uh, Hornby to do quite often. Anyway, let's move on to the loco. So the first thing I want to do is just make a couple of comments about the previous release, Hornby 00 box, and this current uh, uh, release of The Great Gathering. So there's a lot of conversation and debate um, when I posted the video before over the fact that Hornby had used the blue in this box. Now, going back to Hornby 00 in its heyday, the blue boxes always signified a three-rail loco, whereas the red boxes signified a two-rail two loco. And a lot of people felt this should have been a red box. And I kind of defended that in my previous video, saying that aesthetically, I think the blue looks better, um, and they probably just use a little bit of artistic license. So this time round, we do have a red box, albeit not the red of the two rail double O. It's more of a sort of burgundy with a just lighter shade of burgundy running through on the lines. And that brings me to the next point, is when I look at this new box, my eye just goes straight to the white line around the loco. And it just looks like somebody just slapped a sticker on the box. Um, I hadn't noticed it before, but I mean, it, it is, it's on here as well. But I think it's because they had the white lines running through that your eye just didn't go to the line around the loco. It just kind of all merged in. And I can't help but feel they've missed a trick here and not use that burgundy line round the edge. I'm afraid it just doesn't do it for me. It just looks like it's, as I say, it's a sticker just planted on there. And it, yeah, there's something not right with the livery on the box. But anyway, that said, let's put this one to one side. Okay, so going around the box, obviously we've got the Hornby 00 logo on there. Two rail at the top there. Um, 10th anniversary, the great A4 gathering, 2013 to 2023. Now the loco itself, the Hornby number is R30266. And obviously it's the 462 British Rail, Class A4, Sir Nigel Gresley, carrying the BR number 6007. And you see it on the side of the cab there. And let's have a look at the side of the box here. So we've got again the picture of the Sir Nigel Gresley there. Model includes silver etched headboard um, with the great gathering on there. And then gives a little bit of information about the Nigel Gresley. Says uh, in the 1930s, Britain was a place of luxury, glamour, and boundary pushing were all revered and admired. 
and then talks about the two railway companies, the LNER and the LMNS, chasing speed records. I think uh, Nigel Gresley itself got a speed record of 112 miles an hour and then goes on to talk about uh, the Mallard record uh, to 126 miles an hour. Just down the bottom here, it talks about Nigel Gresley during the war being uh, converted into wartime black and just gives a little bit of um, uh, history around it and uh, how it is in preservation. Uh, final bit here, now preserved in the mainline operation, Sir Nigel Gresley wears the BR dark blue livery and took part in the Great Gathering uh, 2013. Other bits on the box, the back just doesn't really tell you much. It's the usual things about, um, you know, scale models not suitable for children, etc, etc. And there's not really much else on there. And just on the top of the box, Railway Museum, obviously uh, referring to the National Railway Museum. And again, the logo for the, uh, the, the, the range. Right. Right, and although I have been in this box a couple of times because I've recorded this a few times uh, I am just going to talk through what was my concerns with the previous Hornby 00 release so there's two bits that I was well three bits I was worried about first of all I was disappointed to see a plastic tender um, this is on the uh, this release of the of the uh, loco plastic tender um, at the time there was no um, advertising that it was plastic it you know, and to pull it out of the box and uh, having spent all that money and then find it being plastic, I was a bit disappointed. I do know this comes with a plastic tender. Uh, it's all over the literature and Hornby are now calling it a traditional plastic tender. As in the Hornby, some of the Hornby 00 locos used to come with a plastic tender, therefore they can call it traditional. Now down the sides of this tender, and it's quite hard to show on the camera, so I'm going to try and run my finger down it. It's, it's rough. There are flash moulds all the way down the side here, and the same on this side. And at certain angles, it's very difficult to show on the camera, but at certain angles, the light catches on them. And you, it's very, very, your eye goes straight to it. And uh, it, it, it's basically a, it's almost like a D-mould, I guess, um, just running down the base of the, of the side there. And um, that worried me. And then the final bit that I was particularly disappointed in is you can see on the bands on the top here where the paint is just not, well, it just doesn't meet, it's, you know, and it uh, is very, your eye goes very, very much to it. And I just felt for this price of loco, those things should have been picked out and caught. So that's what I'm particularly looking for in this great gathering release. And... Although I've been in the box a couple of times, on the previous takes, I have said how apprehensive I am to see what's in here. So, obviously, I already know what's in here, but uh, uh, we'll go through it anyway. So, just sliding it out the box. I think this is rather nice on the lid of the box here. We didn't have this on the previous um, Hornby 00. So, we've got this embossed um, gold. 2013-2023 again the logo on here I think this is a really nice touch when I first slid it out of the cover and to see this I was I was quite surprised by it so that's a really nice touch all right let me slide this out being very careful all right let's get this out of the box right I'll just stand that to one side so first of all, we have a certificate. So my loco is 309 to 510. Uh, again, the Sir Nigel Gresley on there. Certificate signed by Simon Coley. You can see they're obviously not with Hornby anymore. Um, just get, again, gives the same information about the loco. So that's quite a nice touch to get a certificate in there. And then we've got the uh, maintenance sheet. Uh, standard maintenance sheet, tells you general uh, running tips, etc. Oiling points, I think we've all seen these before, how to get the body off the loco, how to get the body off the tender. Um, the coupling, this new style of coupling, um, this was on the previous Gresley, I'll show you this. Very, very neat, Very looks really good and uh, less intrusive than previous couplings that we've seen on locos. And then DCC ready, I believe this is fitted with an eight pin socket and then coal removal and replacement. And then finally on the back, how to fit the additional um, brake connecting rods that come in the uh, accessories bag. Right, let's slide the logo out. So, I'll just put that back in there. Right, sliding this out the box. If 
first thing we see is the accessories pack. So let me just talk through these very quickly. I'm not going to get all of these out, but uh, I'll just show you what's in here. So the first two little bags here, we've got the Great Gathering headboard. You can see the Hornby at the top. Hornby did sponsor the Great Gathering, and I believe the, the headboards on the full-size Locos did have Hornby on them. And you see the Great Gathering on there. I might put a picture in if that's not clear when I come to edit it. And then here on the side, these are the plaques that are on the side of the Loco. If I just bring the box back in, you see this plaque here. So this is a replica of that plaque, which I believe does celebrate the 112 mile an hour speed record that uh, Sir Nigel Gresley achieved. Again, I'll put a picture in if they're not clear when I come to edit. Inside the bag, we have a spare set of wheels here, as you can see. So these locos are fitted with a fixed pony truck. And uh, if you want to run them, you have to run them with a flat, an, an unflanged wheel. Um, basically, otherwise they won't make it around any corners. However, if you want to display the loco, they do provide a set of flanged wheels that you can replace those with so uh, to make it look accurate and uh, complete. We've got a couple of uh, people in here, a driver and a fireman, obviously. You can see the draincocks in the bag there. I'm not going to get them all out. And then there's various other bits in there. We've got the front uh, NEM coupling there. There is a socket on the loco. I'll show you that in a moment, and some vacuum pipes. Uh, and obviously the brake uh, uh, brake components in there. I'm not going to get all those bits out because I'll end up losing them all. all. Right, let's move on to the loco. So as I always say, I, I do like this packaging, um, the way the loco gets presented to you. And I'll just lift it out the box and let me move that to one side. Okay, before I separate the loco and the tender, I'll just show you that coupling, and you can see how unintrusive that really is now to separate them you just literally pull them apart and you can see on the loco we've got a tongue here with some electrical connectors and a very small socket and then on the tender obviously the tongue goes into the uh, into there makes the electrical connections for the pickups and then you've got this little ball on the bottom here that then drops into the socket underneath on, on here you can just make it out and that links the two together. Okay, let's talk about the tender first. So, um, now down the side here, this is much improved. However, there is still very minor flashing on here, but it is a far cry from the previous version. On this side, a little bit more pronounced. It's, as I say, it's very, it's very hard to film, but you can hear my finger running along it. It's uh, rough along this edge, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, because it, it you know it's just where the tool hasn't been I guess in the way the tool hasn't been polished or something it might even be injection points I, I don't know I don't know but um, tenders finished quite nicely as I say it is a plastic tender I did know about that we've got uh, the nice little touches on here you can see at the top the uh, caution symbol has been printed on there this is obviously for the main line running we've got sprung buffers on here and the window in here that I you know I said on the previous video I thought was a little bit a little bit intrusive but uh, having looked at pictures it's not too bad um, and then around the front here nice detail inside um, separately fitted parts however I think you know if I've been picky you could have picked out a few more bits in there you know some of the handles and things and the reason I say that is if I just now show you the cab look at the detailing in there you know it just wouldn't have hurt to carry that through onto the tender uh, one more thing about the tender I do like the coal on here very very effective um the way that uh, you know it does have that sort of sheen that uh, you would see in a coal store so that's uh, that's rather good rather nice okay the loco itself as i said the the cab is absolutely beautifully done absolutely wonderful now right let's just talk about the banding now it is a vast improvement absolute vast improvement but it's still not perfect i mean you can see this little bit here but i guess i'm being picky but what I will say is the blue colour on here, on the metal body, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. I think I much prefer this livery to the green one, and uh, it really does make the loco look stunning. Again, we've got these printed on features here for the overhead running, which is a nice touch. We've got a repetition of the plaques that are in the accessories bag. So I'm guessing if you wanted to get uh, some sort of detail in there, you could put those over there. There's another plaque on the back here, I'm afraid my eyes aren't good enough to read that. I'll have to go and look up what that is. Um, I, I'm, I'm not familiar with it. 
just on the side there. I think it's probably about the uh, Grizzly Preservation Trust. And then the front of the loco, we've got the sprung buffers here, 6007. And on the bottom here, if you just remove this front plate on the uh, on the on the front here, there is a pocket for the NEM coupling if you do want to run uh, with a coupling on the front of the loco. But all in all, it is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at the mechanism on it. It's a beautiful, beautiful loco. Just touching on the pony truck again, fixed pony truck, as I said, um, and you can see the flangeless wheels on there that you would replace if you wanted to put this on display. So, stunning loco, very, very heavy loco. So let me just grab some scales and let's weigh it. Okay, popping the loco onto the scales. We have got 399 grams for the loco itself and with the tender, bring it up to 483 grams. So quite a nice, nice weight of loco. And if it's anything like the previous one, it's gonna be a really strong and powerful uh, runner. But anyway, let's get this over onto the railway and uh, let's get some detailed shots of it. In 1937, the Sir Nigel Gresley was uh, numbered number 4498 and was the 100th Gresley Pacific built by the Great Northern Railway or London and North Eastern Railway. Built in Doncaster, it entered service in 1937 following a naming ceremony at uh, Marleybone Station on the 26th of November and obviously was given the chief engineer's name Sir Nigel Gresley. It was briefly numbered number seven during the war years before becoming number six triple oh seven when NAR was merged into British Railways. On the 23rd of May 1959 it was the first train in the UK booked to advertise a scheduled over 100 miles an hour. During that trip number six triple oh seven set the official post-war speed record for steam traction at 112 miles an hour. So just a couple of notes about the Hornby model. It's depicting era 10 for the loco. The length is 291 millimetres. It runs with a five pole skew wound motor and is suitable for second radius, which is 438 millimetres. Give it a tiny bit of power. So I'm using my HM controller and I've got it set to high impedance and half power. I'll just turn the dial very, very slowly. Just picking it up. Look at the control I've got over that. And back the other way. Bring it back again. Lovely control, really, really smooth. Okay, let's give it a run around the layout. It's going to go very slowly into the tarp tunnel, and you'll be able to see the fire block glow just there. You can see the flicker.
So just before I close out this video, I just wanted to point out the chimney on the Era 3 variant. Uh, obviously got a single chimney on there. And then on the Era 10, we can see that they've gone for the, the double chimney. So it just shows a little bit of the versatility in the Hornby tooling. We're putting aside the very, very tiny blemish on the uh, boiler banding and the little marks on the tender. I think this is an absolute beautiful engine. Um, absolutely stunning in the blue. And, and indeed, where the blue is on the metal body, it just really does uh, work for some reason. It looks The blue on the, on the uh, loco does look a lot better than on the tender. I didn't mention all the separately fitted handrails that are on there and all the little bits of detail just all over the model that I keep seeing. Every time I look at it, I see something new. Um, really really pleased with it and probably one of my favorites in the in my collection now now I've had it running around on both of my layouts for probably the best part of an hour and a half filming bits and pieces and in all of that time it's it's derailed once and that was on a, a set of points that I know are particularly troublesome um, they do a lot of locos do come off on those um, but uh, it, it went over them many 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 times and it was just this one one time that it did come off so very reliable runner very very powerful loco very very pleased with it anyway i'm going to leave that one there if you've enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up and if you're going to have a look on the channel i've got lots of videos on there now of all kinds of subjects a lot of model railway things and basically anything that interests me and uh, if you can subscribe you'll be doing me a massive favor it really does help me out helps the channel out and gives me some encouragement to make some more and with that i'll say thank you ever so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one